Welcome to the Operation Dominate Podcast with your host from Houston, Texas, Chris Martinez, owner of Love My Clean Windows, Love My Clean Roof, helps entrepreneurs through the copycat entrepreneur, helps pastors through the pastor's marketer, but most of all, a family man who loves his wife and kids, and your other host from Cincinnati, Ohio, myself, Gary Guyman, owner of Pressure Watch Cincinnati, Christmas Light Cincinnati, Guyman Media Group, and godfather of the marketing mafia, married to his best friend Jennifer, father to Tyler and Garrett. Let's get ready to dominate. Let's get ready to dominate. Get ready to dominate. What's going on? What's happening? We got Chris Martinez in the house. What's up? Flew in today. Arms are a little sore, I guess. I'm gonna I'm gonna go share this real Let's quick. Get ready to oh, yeah. oh, sharing it out. So, uh, so today, what we're gonna talk about is uh, is building your dream business. And if 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 it gets a little awkward today, it's because uh, Sebastian has not went and bought us a second mic like I've asked a little few times so Chris and I are going to be like staring longingly into each other's eyes while we talk into the mic and um, it's it's nothing but a mic thing it's not it's no other issue besides the mic so if you're like man what did this turn into uh, trust me it's not turning into anything we just got to share the mic so if you see us begin to like gaze into each other's eyes like we need some type of because we got love yeah we do got love just not that kind of love so uh yeah so let's uh so so hey uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. what's up boyd hunter man now we can now we can uh that 6 a.m uh, waffle that's right man it's actually like 5 a.m but yeah <laughs> it's an early waffle Let's see, we got we got a couple people. So we got Boyd, Chris, Michael, Dan, Tim Sullivan, Kenny, Tito. So hey guys, uh, I went live a little bit earlier, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to post questions in the comments regarding um, your business. They can be related to operation, they can be related related to uh, finance, they can be related to marketing. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of spitball a little bit and talk about. A few different things, a few different things. The first thing that I want to talk about is your most interesting customer conversation because I am so uh, enamored, I guess it would be, with great customer service. Uh, I, I got, I got, I got feedback up in here, Seabass. I can see me, I can hear me and see me. I'm just a little, little behind here. Sorry, the monitor was turned on in here. Uh, I, I get squirreled so easily. I can't handle that. What, squirrel? 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 Let's see. Phil Luster, what's happening? Robert, what's happening? Todd Diesel, Bill Opplinger. Um, So, yeah, so hit us up with questions in the comments regarding your business. Again, financial, operation, marketing. Uh, we got Jason over here. If it's uh, related more to operation, uh, financial will we'll lie to you. Marketing um, <laughs> will lie. We will, uh, let, let me just do this disclaimer. Uh, we are not attorneys. We are not uh, CPAs or financial advisors. Uh, but, I, but we will give you advice and it'll be free. And that's what it will, 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 it will be worth. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, so what, what I want to do is I want to talk about, first thing, about some interesting customer stories. I got all kinds of them. Jason just reminded me of a really good one. Um, but uh, talk about an interesting customer situation. So what is your most... <clears throat> We'll use the word interesting. What's what's your most interesting customer situation that you've encountered? Oh man, um, interesting. True story, dude. True story. This made this was a couple things. This was right after I got married, so it made it really awkward for me. <clears throat> We're in a million dollar home, and a customer says, "Hey, I'm not home yet. I'm at the gym." Um, go ahead and get started on the inside so we go inside we get started she comes home from the gym we're cleaning and 
no joke, dude. My wife knows this story too, so it's okay. I told I actually had to call you'll see why. I had to call my wife in the middle of this. She she uh she goes upstairs, she comes back downstairs, and she's wearing lingerie. And it's like short cut lingerie. And you've never had these customers. And and dude, she's doing the maid service thing, like, and she's trying to vacuum and she's like trying to and I'm like, oh my gosh, are you freaking kidding me right now? And so this goes on, dude. And I'm I usually I'd be like Yes, but I'm just now getting married. I'm like, I can't have this, dude. I'm a newly married man. I I'm going outside, dude. I'm going out. I'm like Joseph right now. I'm running. Like, whoosh. get away from me. Get away from me. I ain't got too many nose left in me. Get away, you know. So I go outside, man. I start washing windows. Um Wilson was my partner at the time. We were working for the franchise, the Window Genie. So this was at the Window Genie. And uh, we finished the job up. I get in the van. Wilson's, we're like 20 minutes down the road. And Wilson goes, dude, I got to tell you this story. You're not going to believe this. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, I think that lady was, um, dude, she offered, she wanted me to get in the bath to rinse off. And I'm like, he's like, I know you're not going to believe me, man. She's like, oh, you look hot and sweaty. You should take a bath. And I'm like, dude, I believe you. Let me tell you what happened downstairs. She's like, bending over cleaning stuff up in front of me short skirt and i'm like i gotta go this is a million dollar home dude million dollar home so i'm i'm like i'm calling katie i like hey listen i I gotta let you know what's going on right now just so you know that this ain't like some movie where the pool boy i got one i gotta tell somebody about this right like and you i'm gonna tell you about it because this, this is something like when i'm single i wish would always happened now that i'm married i'm like oh come on somebody please quit and so i'm talking to her and she's like well what happened i'm like i went outside i'm not gonna lie to you i went out like a bunch of things happened but i'm like i went outside like at the end of it but that was probably the most interesting thing that ever happened because she was pretty blunt about it and then According to my uh, partner, which he was upstairs, I was downstairs. We didn't talk about this. He's like, hey, bro, she says I'm really sweaty and I need to take a bath. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. He's like, I know you're not going to believe. I'm like, no, I believe you, bro. I believe you. I believe like every part of this story makes sense. And he's like, well, I was like, so what, how'd you respond? He's like, I turned around. I looked at her and I'm like, um, what? It, I didn't know what to say. He's like, I, I didn't know how to respond to her. And I was like, so what'd you do? He's like, dude, I just kept, kept washing windows. I pretend like I didn't hear her. I turned around, I was like, what? And I just kept washing windows. And I'm like, good job, buddy. Way to go. <laughs> That's my most interesting story, man. You only see that in movies. Yeah. Never, ever had it happen again after that. Um, but pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. I was, I felt flattered. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> we we did not. We have never had that happen. Um, that I can honestly say ever happened. The only thing that I guess probably our most interesting customer was a guy um, whose name um, is also what you teach your kids to call a penis, similar to a hot dog. Oscar Meyer, yeah, and. Uh, was he also a senator? No, Wiener? but he was he was related to him, I'm sure. Okay. And I was trying to be nice and I called him Weiner. Why? And he corrected me every time. It's Wiener. Okay. Okay, but I'm gonna call you Weiner. Yeah. <laughs> I can't call you Wiener. Without laughing. <laughs> hey Mr. Wiener. <laughs> and uh wow. He um really didn't like I don't know. He, he, it, there was nothing like crazy about the job itself. He was just our most interesting customer, and he kept hiring us. And uh, thankfully, we've gotten to the point to where we have cleaned everything possible, and we're not going to have to deal with Wiener in a long time for a long time now. So, um, um, she must have heard my story because she's calling me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, we, we had we had Wiener, and I kept saying Weiner, and he no, it's Wiener. Okay, thank you. Please don't say that again to me. But uh, my obviously, I, he didn't get naked, so or <laughs> close to naked, so that's a good thing. Um, 
We do got a question, so we'll uh, we'll stop the festivities for a couple questions here real quick. Dan Berkey. Jason, look up his profile and tell, see if it tells me what he does. March marks my first year of business. I'm doing okay and not killing it yet. What I want to know is what do you do with crap days, bad weather days? I'm assuming he's probably an exterior cleaner or something related to that. Um, crap days and bad weather days. I mean, you want to start? Man, I'm going to say plan for the future, dude. Um, <clears throat> I know exactly. We did not plan in Houston to have a, a crappy January and February. We did. And what we're doing this year is we're planning for it next year. Um, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to know that, you know, hey, April, it rains a lot in Houston. May, it rains a lot in Houston. And how do you combat that? In my, in my opinion, you need to prepare for it. Uh, when you're brand new, it's hard to prepare. You don't, have, you don't have data to back you up. But as you go along, and one of my things is when you're building goals, you need to have the object, ob, objectives in there as well, the roadblocks that are going to be there. So um, if you're an exterior cleaning company, just know that you're going to have bad weather. Um, and, this, and, and this, in my opinion, comes down to money management and uh, handling your finances. If you make, make $10,000, don't go buy a speedboat. Put it away for a rainy day, right? That's the cliche, cheesy thing to say, but it's the real deal. I mean, if, you, if you're going to make 50 grand in a month, don't go buy, don't go buy, don't go spend it all. You know, if you do, if you're profiting 100 grand for the year, don't go spend it all. Put it away. Just know like, hey, dude, I'm going to probably have two or three months, 90 days of bad weather, and I need to prepare for that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a couple things. One, like Chris was saying, plan for it. Um, you know, live off of 70% of your revenue probably. Um, and keep that 30% back. That's one way. Um, I can tell you we don't, we don't do that. Um, the biggest thing we've done is uh, we've reclassified what a crappy bad weather day is. Like, you can ask Chris, it's raining here. It's going to rain tomorrow. He asked me, he's like, you guys working? Yep. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> but, yeah, we have people out on a truck. And, and um, we've reclassified what, what bad weather is. So as long as it's above 32, I'll send my, send my trucks out. We're, we're in Cincinnati, so, you know, um, Lows in the wintertime will get into the teens and the 20s, but for the most part, most days, um, most days in February and March are going to be 30s uh, on, on the average. I mean, you're still going to get days that are still colder, but <clears throat> we, we've just reclassified what a bad weather day is, and we, we unfortunately, or for my, for my guys, unfortunately, they work in this stuff, and um, you know, we found things like using hot water when you're when you're applying bleach makes it more effective. Um, so in the cold, you can uh, um, you can still clean. Number one, um, I know there's other additives and stuff like that you can add to bleach <coughs> that help it stay effective if you're a cleaner. But let's say you're not a cleaner. Let's say you know you're a landscaper or um, you're a roofer. You're something where bad weather definitely. Uh, plays into it. My suggestion would be to service calls, um, you know, generate business out of service calls um, or find an additional line of business. That's the biggest thing we did. We had a Christmas lights in 2014 yep. and um, Christmas lights this past year was a third, was a third of our revenue. And um, you know, that doing things like that will help you um, through those things, you know, we're looking at a couple other services to potentially add this year that can be full year services. Like we do no interior cleaning, so you know, if we're not cleaning outside, we're not making any money. And it's uh, one of those things that are, is imperative to uh, if you're going to put that card, you got to put it all the way up there, so because um, it's down, you need to lift the card up. So. Uh, there we go. 11 minutes till the camera resets. Um, so you just have to make sure that, uh, that you plan for it. And uh, it's one of those things that no matter what advice you get, 
Um, you're still going to get hit with it. Yeah. It's still going to happen. It's still going to suck. And it's going to suck, yeah. Dude, it's going to suck no matter how much money you have put away, too. Because if you're goal-oriented and you're looking at your goals and say March or, or February, you're like, dude, I'm going to do X amount of dollars and it snows the whole month, right? And you're like, as a goal-oriented person, you're like, it sucks. So it's... it's it's still going to be emotional, and you're going to have heartbreaks. Yeah, so I mean, good. my goal in February <laughs> was to do $30,000. And let me just give you a quick backstory. In 2016, in February, we did this much revenue. And in March in 2016, wasn't it the same? No, we did some. It was all commercial. No, I'm not talking about last year. I'm talking yeah. about the year before. Very little. 2016 in March was not much either. Well, 2017, I refocused, and um, I was like, we're going to try to find business and do business as much as possible. And so 2017, I think we did like 12 grand in, fe in February. And we did like, um, no, we still did zero in February. And we did 15, 12 or 15 in March last year. And in this, and this year, I was just like, you know what? Uh, we are going hog wild. January is our takedowns for Christmas lights. And February, we're cleaning. And uh, Jason's like, you can't clean in the, you can't clean when it's freezing. I know we're just gonna, we're just gonna clean when it's not freezing. He's like, but it's Cincinnati. You can't plan for that. I'm like, I know, but we're just gonna clean when it's not freezing. And my goal was to do, I think, twenty five thousand, and uh, we didn't do twenty five thousand. I think we did uh, what I have on the board, seventeen. And then the goal for March was to do thirty. So that's good. Just because you don't hit your goal. Doesn't mean you don't quit, though, right? Right, you just keep going. You right. keep going. Oh, yeah. I mean, next year. You don't, you don't cry and be like, year, oh, I'm never going to hit a million dollars this year, right? All right. I mean, you can ask him. Next year, the goal will probably be 35. And he'll be like, well, we only did 12 last year. Yeah. I know. We're going to do 35. <laughs> um, and then March, the goal was like 30, and I think we hit 27. So, I mean, it's just one of those things to where you, you either have to do one of two things. You deal with it, you deal with it, or you put in place other services that you can do during those those time periods. And the bad thing about that is um, there's not too many services that you can only do when it's cold that are all that's always going to be re revenue generating. Like, yeah, you could you could you could uh, plow snow up here, but it doesn't snow all the time. Like we don't you know, like last year I think we got three inches of snow total in twenty seventeen. Like you're not gonna make any money plowing snow then and then we just spend a, mo a bunch of money to be able to plow snow. So you gotta pick a service that's gonna give you revenue um, and give you consistent revenue through that. Uh, that went a little long, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Todd, uh, Todd has a question, this is probably for you. What is your ideal ratio of residential versus commercial business? Um, ideal would be 50-50, um, but it's more like 70-30, 70% residential, 30% commercial. And, and really, I say 50-50, but probably the the, where we're at maybe a little bit more commercial but um you know commercial has longer payment times um i mean you haven't seen me try to collect money yet but you saw how i dealt with the customer so you can only imagine like, can only somebody, can only imagine uh, when somebody owes this money like <laughs> that wasn't even money involved holy yeah, cow well, money not, is involved kind of like, yeah. i mean um <laughs> I mean, you know, commercial is one of those things to where it takes a little bit longer. I mean, it is big hits. Like, we did a job on Sunday that took, like, five hours. It was two grand. Um, we got a job scheduled for next week that's two days, one truck. It'll be 60, what was it, 6,400, that, that job I showed you. Um, it's like 6,300, something like that. So it'll be two remember, days. I mean, but, yeah. it's good money. But the thing is, you know, they like to extend out how long they pay you, and – I want to be paid in 10 days and um, we get pretty aggressive. We did lose a customer last year because we get kind of aggressive, but if you don't want to pay us, it's not, it's not worth my time to send out a truck and then not get paid for 45 days or 60 days. I mean, we have one idiot want us to sign a contract to do cleaning for him and we would accept payment after 90 days. I'm like, no, but it's a $10,000 contract. I don't care. I can't, I can't finance your operation. So that's the negative. Residential definitely gives you immediate, <clears throat> gives you that immediate cash flow, uh, but you don't get the big hits all the time like you do with commercial. I mean, you, you know, we, we probably did a couple of residential jobs that were three, four, five thousand dollars last year, but uh, commercial, like our our minimum ticket on a commercial is usually two or three grand. Um, so those are those are great to have, but uh, I would say probably seventy. 
Seventy thirty is is pretty good. What's up, Connor? What's up, Nick? Let's see, Chris Foltz uh, on LinkedIn after the first contact, they say thanks. What do you say to keep engaging and get them to contact you for quotes? The biggest thing I do, Chris, is um, you should continually reach out to them about every thirty days with messages. Um, but the biggest thing I do is in my message, I put a link to my website, and we're actually going to talk about this tomorrow. Um, Put a link to your website, and if you're good, you put a link to a specific page to send them. Um, so, like for property managers or real estate agents, you're sending you're sending them to pages, um, but you can retarget them um, at a later date with ads, continually keeping them in front of you. Because LinkedIn is one tool, kind of like Facebook is one tool, and Google is one tool, and email is one tool. Like. If you're building a business on just one thing, you're gonna have a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And so you wanna put all these pieces in place so that everything is filled in. Like we've done a ton of email marketing this month to fill in to where not a lot of people are searching on Google. And we've gotten some Facebook ads, but it's not quite spring yet. Not quite yet, right? No. I mean, Dude, nobody told them it was springtime up here. It's crazy, man. Like I come from Texas, it's sun shining. Blue skies, and then I get on a plane and I, Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta first, and it's freaking 48 degrees in Atlanta. No one told them it was spring. I come over here and it's 54. No one told you guys it was spring. It's gonna be like 60 tomorrow, though. I'm supposed to go camping with this dude next in the next few. I don't know when, but end of April. End of April, and I'm like, hopefully spring shows up by then. I, I don't know. He's going to Magdan. Who knows? Who knows, man? Dan Anyways. Murphy has a question for us, and it's yours. For window cleaning, is screen repair a good add-on service that is worthwhile? No clue, dude. I've, uh, do I don't do screen repairs. What I, what I, here's what we've done, and I think you can probably relate to this. <clears throat> when we first got started, we did so many different services. We were just talking about power washing and sealing decks was one of them. We no longer power wash and seal decks. Um, uh, rust removal and all that other stuff, right? We know we don't we do what we're good at and what makes us money, and that's it. So as far as like uh, screen repairs goes, um, from what I hear, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, we just don't get into it. So yeah, Nick Darn weather holding out way too long in DC area. Also, come on spring, man. Come on spring. That's what I'm saying. Hey, we just hit spring. March 1st, spring was uh, like really on the dot. March 1st came around and spring hit. So we're good in Houston now. Spring is there. So uh, let, let me let me follow up what Chris said about services because I, I just got done saying find a service that you can go through the winter or whatever. And, and I do believe that. But what Chris said is absolutely right. Like Ryan Stuman preaches there's riches and niches. It's right. Riches and niches. And it, That's it's right. It's the same thing with us. Um, you know, we like we know we know companies that only did one service and did what Jason three hundred thousand dollars three hundred fifty thousand dollars one service that's it like didn't do anything else um, he washed houses he didn't do window cleaning didn't do roof cleaning he didn't do concrete I mean the list goes on he washed houses and that was his niche and there there definitely is riches and niches. Unfortunately, as business people, you and I are very guilty of this. We see dollars, yeah, and it's like, man, we should do that. And I would tell Jason, man, we should do that. And he goes, but you don't understand. I don't care if I don't understand. There is money there. And then, and then when we're standing on a deck in a hundred degree <laughs> freaking weather, and it's me and him because we don't make enough money quite yet to uh, to to hire people. And the people we do hire were were slep rocks. It's me and him, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, why do we do decks? He said, because you said there was money in decks. Why do we listen to me? He's like, I don't know, but we have. So, yeah, I mean, you got to get focused on what it is that makes you money. I mean, in our sixth year, our sixth year, we're, we're drilling it down this year and focusing on services. The good thing is, like, our marketing is so robust, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to say this enough to guys that are new in the business or in the business or whatever it is, make your marketing be robust. Do things that work. Don't do things that don't work. I just I just was in here and I did a live video and I took um, a camera shot of the EDDM flyers that are left over from last year. 
Um, EDDM just is one of those, like we dropped 40,000 flyers over a five month period and we spent more money than we made. Did we know what we were doing? I don't know, probably not, obviously, but it's just not something we invest our money in. I can take that same $12,000 and invest it in things that's gonna give me a 10 time return. And so we get caught up and we see the latest marketing fad. We see the la latest thing. And trust me, we do too. Like uh, last year we thought, man, we could take these beacons. We can put these beacons out and we can, we can make money off these beacon marketing. So where are you going to put these? I don't know. I'll put them out of my church. Well, what are, they gonna, what are you going to do when they, the church finds out that you got beacons hidden in their church? I don't know. I'll probably just have to get more money. I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't thinking <laughs> it through that far. Um, and no, we have not done that. So if anybody from Crossroads is watching, I do not have beacons hidden in the church anywhere. Um, although we did talk about it. <laughs> That's hilarious. But uh, it, it's, it's, you have to invest in good marketing. And that really, Chris, gets you through even lean times. I mean, if you get yourself booked out so far um, to where you can start raising prices, you get to the point to where, okay, I need that second crew. Um, you get to the point to where you're profitable on a daily basis of, you know, a couple couple hundred dollars a day your profitability is to maybe a thousand dollars a day. You get to that point. It's because of you've invested in strategies that work related to marketing. You've invested in strategies that, re that, that work related to operations. And so new in business, it's the greatest time because you get to plan your roadmap for success you don't have to make you don't have to make bad decisions you don't there's too many things happening if you're in the service industry and you build a business that is making bad decisions it's your fault yeah because there's too many resources out there yeah i mean josh latimer howard partridge chris lambernides i mean the list goes on and on of resources that are out there to help you build a successful business from yeah. people that have already done it before you and you know I used to be I used to be this way like I'd hear like Josh Latimer say you know you should you should invest money in this and invest time in this and I would always say what does he know what does he know and Josh if you're listening I was I was being a, a douchebag so don't take this the wrong way but Not I, would think, I would think, <laughs> I would think, no. I'd think what does he know what does he know well I don't know he built a business and then he sold it that's what he knows um, and, and unfortunately, we, we get like that. Yeah. You know, when we're business owners, we got this ego. Yep, pride. And uh, it is what it is. So, hey, we got to take a quick break because I keep getting this, uh, you know, we got capture cards. And the capture cards get, get a little uh, restless. So, Sebastian, if you're ready, we can, uh, we can take a quick break. Quick commercial break. And we'll be right back. Negative one. Oh, sorry, countdown. We are back, ready to dominate. Hey, thanks for hanging out uh, for the second part of building your dream business. Hey, a uh, couple of questions that we still have here. Dan Berkey wants to know, how do people find you guys for the bigger jobs? Where do you put yourself to be found? Um, so my secret for uh, commercial jobs is, uh, is email marketing. That's the, uh, that's the secret. We, uh, 2017, we did quarter million dollars related to commercial work and the majority of that comes from email. We also get commercial work from Google. Uh, we actually got a commercial quote request from Facebook the other day. Um, guy saw the Facebook ad and said, hey, can you do a commercial building? Yes, we absolutely can. And that quote's out and I believe uh, that's a job we'll probably do in the next two weeks. But uh, email marketing by far is the best way to get commercial business that we found. Um, I don't believe there's been anything else that we've done that has been as successful. I remember the first time that we dropped email to property managers and it was crazy. I was, my office used to be in my basement. Uh, Jason kept the truck at his house. I ran the office out of my basement. I run this email on a Monday morning and I didn't know what I was doing at the time. So I blind copy everybody in one email and send it out and almost got my email address blocked by Google and everything. And I got seven quote requests. As soon as I sent that email out, like within two hours, I'm calling, I'm like, we got seven commercial quote requests. And Jason's like, how are we going to do that work? I don't know, but that's right. I'm going to send it again and see what happens. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of content in the mafia. Check out the Gaiman Media YouTube channel. You can 
check both of those out for content related to email marketing. But um, email has been great. Um, I know there's a lot of people that will say go knock on doors. We did that and it was highly unsuccessful. And let me tell you, you put me in front of somebody, I can sell them. And um, how successful was that? We got one. We, we did get one. I mean, but we just... It's did. not scalable. Yeah, it's not scalable. It's, it's not, not scalable. scalable. I mean, we went and we passed out flyers probably to, what, 15, 20 properties. Um, the property manager is never on site. And if they are, they can't make the decision. Um, and and the one customer that we got, she, she loves us. She doesn't quote us out. She just calls me and says, hey, I need this done. Send me an invoice. Um, but that customer, like, it was the perfect time. Like, it everything lined up. She had had stuff done by a pressure washer previously that looked like garbage. She was having a um, uh, property inspection that was coming up in a couple weeks, and she needed all this stuff taken care of, and I just happened to land in her office at the right time. And uh, you can chalk that up to being at the right place in the right time. But it's, How, how it's about this? Available. Can you say this? Um Consistency. Mm -hmm. that and it, is. That's probably a good way. So if you send out something, now I know EDDM is different. We sent EDDM out, 40,000 didn't work, like never again. But just to be clear, I sent it out 15,000 to the same people three times. Okay, well then you're consistent. That didn't work. <laughs> but would you say though, consistency is probably the number one thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're. If with you're any gonna, marketing. With any marketing, right? It, you can't just... If I run a Facebook ad and I don't get any customers on the first day, I can't say, oh, this don't work. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So consistency. Email marketing. Got it. Thanks, guys. I will have to look into it. I'm not familiar with marketing. Hey, get in. Get in. Look, all the free value in the marketing mafia, um, you just get into the, the search engine, right? Mm -hmm. Enter email marketing. And stuff. let me tell you something. My office manager, Miss Hope, um just started the uh, LinkedIn marketing from videos free all she did was just spend some time and right now she's crushing it go watch those free videos in there and no time dude you'll be crushing it which brings up LinkedIn which is a great way to get commercial business dude, as we're, well we're she's I say we she's killing it dude yeah hope, killing hope it. basically is doing exactly what we told her to do yeah. um so we Chris and I run marketing for for a few people uh, along with Jason and Sebastian. But uh, so one customer, I just uploaded 7,000 uh, realtor email addresses into his LinkedIn account yesterday. Um, and today, this morning, um, he has a window cleaning estimate. And all we did was import a list. We got a list from his local realtor association. Cost about 100 bucks to scrape from Upwork uploaded the list into his LinkedIn, boom, he's got one email request for window cleaning inside and out. It's a bit it's a pretty big house. It looks like it could be a couple hundred dollars out. That's the first one and we like haven't even tried anything else. So just having LinkedIn and communicating with people on LinkedIn can help you to to begin to build that. The key there is though you gotta have a lot of connections. You gotta have a lot of fish to be thrown your bait. But it's also a way to uh, to get business. Um, had some other people join. Hey guys, if you have questions related to your business, whether it be operation, financial, marketing, we are not CPAs, legal advisors, or financial advisors, but we will give you advice. It is free. <laughs> and everything except the marketing advice, I don't know if I'd take 100%. The marketing advice, though, will be good, I promise you. Um, we may, may throw some financial advice. I've been given some really bad financial advice related to businesses. I've owned... Um, I filed taxes on probably seven or eight businesses in my life, and I've had multiple CPAs. And Mike Garlic, who is in the group, is is our CPA currently. But I've had multiple. He's mine now. I just hired him. Yeah, I mean, I've had multiple CPAs who have given very bad advice, very bad advice. And I mean, the good thing about Mike is he studies his craft hard. Like he he likes UK basketball and he likes doing taxes, right? So that's the good thing about Mike. And um, is that the University of Kansas? Kentucky Jack Wagon. It's <laughs> crazy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sorry, man. It's a long ride back. It is. <laughs> uh, they did anyway. them bad, though. It was a good game, though. It was a good game. Yeah. But uh, 
he get, he got me all flustered now. Yeah, I um, know. I can't even concentrate. No, but so I've been given very bad financial advice, and you really got to pay attention to who you get advice from. Um, we've been fortunate that um, you know with Mike and even um, someone that Jason knows who is a CPA who has been um, who has worked with businesses that have sold businesses that we've gotten advice through them. We've gotten good advice, but I can tell you, man, in my 30s. And in my late 20s, I've had CPAs tell me stuff that probably could evoke prison time. And I'm glad and thankful that I did not follow through with that with that stuff. And as a business owner, you have to be really careful about who you align yourself with um, related to your financial, um, your, your financial picture and the legal aspect of your business. Those two things are very, very important because things can happen to your business that you didn't expect to happen. I'll give you an example. Uh, I owned a mortgage company for eight years, and uh, it was a it was a corporation, right? It was an S corp, and uh, had a situation to where we, uh, we we were in a we, we were in a space that was really close to the Bengals stadium, and we decided we, the Bengals suck. If you don't know this, they're they're not very good at football usually, and um, we had just drafted Carson Palmer, and it was like drafting Jesus Christ. I mean, you you would have thought. <laughs> That uh, he he was he had come back for the second time. I mean, literally, because the city was a buzz, and and uh, he sat his first year, and the second year was his his coming out party, and we had a Monday night football game, and so at my office we decide um, the parking lot is a tailgating area. So at my office we decide, hey, we're gonna have a Monday night football tailgate party, so the office, the parking lot, kind of can all work together. And we had a situation to where someone was invited up into the party, and when they were walking up the steps, they fell. Now they weren't in my, um, they weren't in my space. Um, they were still out in general common area, but they were invited up into our party, and they fell and they hit their head. Um, they ended up going to the hospital. Thankfully, everything was okay, but they decided that they were going to sue, and. Um, so they tried to sue our company and list us as a, um, a defendant, but they also tried to sue me. And they tried to say that I was giving the party and not the company, which means that I was highly liable. And thankfully, my attorney was good enough that he was able to show that, no, he's an officer of the corporation, and in his role as officer of the corporation, he had this party. Now, I'm thinking to myself, how did I get into this mess? Like. How did this go from, man, we're trying to have a good time, mm. to now I'm getting personally sued because we had a party? Um, you know, n- nothing, you know, nothing crazy, nothing illegal was going on. We just were having a good time. But because people are thirsty for money and they will try to find where the money's at, and you, you, you own a company, you own a company, trust me, they will try to, they, there will be people out there that will try to take advantage of that. And that's why it's good to have good legal advice and good financial advice so that you don't do things that ruin your company down the road that that you've taken so long to build up. You're going to invest in marketing. You're going to invest in systems. Make sure you have those things in place so that things don't crumble on you just because of one small bad thing that happens. Good stuff. Yeah. So I saw we had a legend in here, Josh Latimer. What is up, Mr. Josh? I wonder if Josh has anything to say about a certain course that might be dropping. Hey, Thursday... Got to get on that super course. Over fifty million dollars in combined revenue between all the trainers, uh, Howard Partridge and Josh Latimer, two of my mentors that have helped me along the way. Brandon Vaughn, uh, Brian Haggerty, Sid, Gary. I can't even name them all. Lisa McQueen. Uh, so many different people in that course. Fifty million dollars in combined revenue. Chris Lamborghini is another legend in the game. Um, I think, man, I hit a window cleaner doing over a hundred grand. This was before roof washing. I know today, you know, when you hear companies doing millions, pressure washing and roof washing is usually in the equation. But then you got Chris Lamborghini's man that's doing 150, 200 grand a month, and 30 crews out there window washing ain't that crazy yeah these are guys you need to learn from the sales and marketing super course man get on it so what i'm gonna do i'm i'm not being rude i'm looking for the link um copy 
I'm gonna put the link here, guys. What I want you to do is, um, if you own a small business, yeah, if you did over three hundred thousand a month, often, not oh, just man. one time, often, three hundred thousand dollars a month. Get out of here with that, dude. Three hundred thousand dollars a month, oftentimes. oftentimes. Yeah, dude, I, that was a story. I, I, yeah, I was listening to uh, jo Josh's podcast this month, dude. I had no clue that Brandon, dude, last month they did 200 Oregon. something thousand. Yeah, Oregon. 200 We're something. Need to go out to Oregon. Yeah, 200 something thousand dollars last month. His, his goal this month is 400 something thousand. But the best part about that, I was listening to his business, um, business plan. I think oh, his this goal? yeah this year they're only supposed to do two hundred fifty thousand. He's talking about doing four hundred thousand in a month. Yeah, you said a couple years ago he wrote a plan and he's like this was yeah. So here, man, here's a good thing, dude. Awesome. So I was I'm reading expert uh, expert secrets Russell Brunson and Russell Brunson was talking about in the book like chapter two or three. He's like he was he's a uh, a wrestler. He's married. He's not working because NCAA is not allowing him to work. So his wife's the breadwinner. So he needed to do something to bring in some money. He's like, what if I could just do something that brought in a thousand dollars a month, which was online marketing, and meets see somebody that's doing a it made a million dollars in eighteen hours, right? So Russell goes from like, man, if I only I can do a thousand dollars a month. Oh man, if only right to seeing somebody do a million bucks in eighteen hours. It was almost like a, a and, it, and it happened with me, like with Josh. Like Josh, if Josh can do a hundred and fifty thousand, and Josh, forgive me if I say this wrong, Flint, Michigan, Fenton, Michigan. Why can't I do a hundred and fifty thousand in Houston, Texas? Right. All I ever wanted to do was six hundred dollars a day until I met someone like Josh Latimer or Chris Lamborghinis, who's doing hundred thousand dollar months. And that makes you realize, like, holy cow, my vision, my goal. Of, Maybe it's it is attainable, but not only is it attainable, maybe I should grow my horizon, right? Like maybe Absolutely. that's why it's so important, man, to get around people that are doing what you want to do. And at that time, I was only want to do six hundred dollars a day. And now that I hear Brandon Vaughn doing four hundred thousand a month, four hundred fifty thousand dollars he wants to do this month. You hear Chris Lamborghini's three hundred thousand. You hear the Josh Latimer's one hundred fifty thousand. You know what? All three of them guys started out the same, same as way. I, the same as I started. Yeah. We all throwing did. their hat, yeah. ripping their hair out. God, dog it! I can't find a good employee. To so doing four hundred fifty thousand dollars in a month. Um, and I'm somebody that's like, if you can do it, I can do it, right? If you can do it, I can do it. And, dude, that's motivation right there. Sign up, super course. Yeah, so I put the link to the webinar that Josh is having on Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, for the sales and marketing super course. Uh, I was gracious enough, uh, or, or, or Josh was uh, gracious enough, not I was gracious enough. Josh was uh, gracious enough to uh, to allow me to do two of the courses. And, uh I don't know, Josh. I, I haven't gotten to listen to him, but I know we had a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, we, Josh and I, it, se it seemed like we were kind of doing some marketing jamming uh, when we were doing the email marketing and the AdWords. It was a, it was a great time. Uh, I'm positive that the information that are in those two courses uh, will pay you back ten times what that super marketing or what that sales and marketing super course is uh, is going to be sold for. 10 times. I'm, I'm pretty positive about Facts. that. The email marketing alone. If you take the email marketing and you do those things this month, you'll make 10 grand in your business uh, within within 45 days. I mean, that's that's how powerful email marketing is. Um, I was showing Chris the email campaigns that we dropped in the last uh, two weeks. And email is a an integral part of our business. And... Um, it, it can be a very powerful piece of your business. And, and AdWords, I mean, we've had some really great success with AdWords. Um, we had a, basically a uh, crazy, crazy return. You know, $20,000, $19,000, make $600,000 uh, related to AdWords. And, and, the, and that's not a typical result, but Google is something that can be very powerful for your business as well. And uh, while Google may, may, maybe has a few learning curves with it as well, uh, we have step by step on how to set up an ad and, and how to how to be successful 
with Google. And, and Josh has a ton of people teaching a ton of things. He talked about Brandon Vaughn. He's teaching a course. Chris Lamberniti's. He's teaching a course. Josh, La Josh Latimer. He's teaching a course. Howard Partridge. He's teaching a course. And a lot of people that I, I, I haven't even heard of. And yeah. I can guarantee you this. If they're teaching a course for Josh... They know their stuff. They're they doing some stuff. They yeah. know their stuff. They're doing And, uh, yeah. you know, Josh Josh uh, is the reason why, Josh Latimer is the reason why that my brother and I got into Christmas lights. Um, first of all, you can't say enough good stuff about Josh. First of all, he's a Christian, number one. Number two, he's a family man. But number three, he cares about people. Yeah. And it is something that is thread throughout him. It's people not over just, profit. Yeah, it's not just something that... Um, somebody can say about Josh. It's anybody that knows Josh, uh, and I've really only gotten to know him since February. In fact, Josh and I were having a call uh, on on a Saturday. He had reached out to me. My name kept coming up in his uh, in his group, the Growth Vault. Of course, it was. Come on. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the name, my name kept coming up in his Growth Vault. Thankfully, it was good stuff and not bad stuff. Uh, but my name kept coming up, and we scheduled a call and we talked on a Friday and. Uh, you know, Josh is like, and why aren't we best friends already? And I'm like, I know, man. You're just on this other level that I got I gotta try to get to. But Josh is um Josh is just a good, good dude. And uh this product that he's putting out, I believe it is going to be a game changer in the service industry world. And uh, you know, Josh has already put out one game changer product, uh Send Jim. Um Oh, not only that, the the boot camp. The boot camp. The boot camp. I, I know for a fact that's changed um, dozens, dozens of business owners' lives. So I can only imagine what the sales and super the sales and marketing super course is going to do because holy cow, that was Josh. Now you got Josh with fifty million dollars in combined revenue, other people. So Crazy. Pretty awesome. So click on that link. Get registered for the webinar. It's Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and uh, he's gonna unroll this. Uh, he's gonna roll out this uh, sales and marketing super course to the service industry world. Don't miss out on that. The link is in the comments. I pinned it to the top. Click on that. Brandon Steve's yes, that is the same course that I sent you last week. Click on that link. Get registered. But I can tell you this: when when Chris and I talk about what our goal and what our focus is. For doing like this podcast and the other things that we do, I mean, we're focused on changing lives, changing businesses, changing lives, and I can tell you that is right along the same kind of step and path that Josh has as well. He's just way ahead of us, so we got to do a lot of catching up. To uh, he's a ninja. Yeah, yeah, he is. So Josh, uh, and thanks for being uh, thanks for being on the podcast, brother. We uh, we appreciate you. Who has questions that we can answer about your business? To help you, somebody said Josh Latimer is goat. Yes, he is. That boy Hunter wasn't him. Um, who has questions? Any questions left, guys? Uh, like I said, we're gonna be we're gonna go live again with another uh, taping of taping. Um, <laughs> we're 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 on that level. <laughs> we're on that level, man. I, mean, I, I am forty five, so <laughs> I have had tape in my life. Sorry. Uh, for another production, video production of, uh, of the podcast tomorrow. We'll be live a bunch uh, tomorrow and probably Thursday as well. So, guys, thanks for hanging out. Got anything to uh, end us with here, Mr. Martinez? Hey, I'm going to just follow along in his steps and say, Are you ready to dominate? Let's get ready to dominate. That's right. We'll see you guys tomorrow.